London Fashion Week never looked so weird. And why is London Fashion Week so different? Well, London has always been on the fringe, on purpose and by design. And year after year, the city throws its fashion to the world and leaves many wondering what they've just seen. And why is that? For one, unlike Paris and Milan, London largely hosts independent labels, ensuring that the latest looks presented are coming from young brands and designers that have something new to bring to the industry. And true to form, this year's fall edition was full of weird designs and outrageous debuts, sprinkled with a few celebrities for good measure. And of course, at the Monstery, we have the tea. Are you ready to sip, monsters? Let's get into it then. So, in connection with the British Fashion Council's celebration of 30 years of new gen, London Fashion Week aligned under the banner Rebel 30 Years of London Fashion and proved once again the eclectic and crazy spirit that has made its mark worldwide for the past three decades. And you know it isn't a true London Fashion Week without a smattering of celebrities on the front rows and red carpets. So, which stars came out and lent their support to the favorite designers this fashion week? Well, there was power couple Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick. SJP has hit her stride recently with the latest iteration of her signature show, Sex and the City, with And Just Like That and as a powerhouse fashionista. She is the greatest accessory to her husband, fellow actor Matthew Broderick, who escorted his lovely wife to several events during their stay in the UK including the ATG summer party in where else? That's right, Kensington Palace. But the place to be during London Fashion Week? The Vogue World Party, of course. Celebrities came out in full support for the event. They included Oscar winner Kate Winslet, T-Vision in all-white at the Vogue World event in an all-white pantsuit, Royal princesses Beatrice and Eugenie attended and lent their royal touch. Also present was a very pregnant Sienna Miller in a belly-bearing white ensemble. Cara Delevingne came with outre hair in an array of colors, but the pièce de résistance and then the supermodels came through. Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, Christy Turlington, and Linda Evangelista held court together and proved that their reign is over when they say it is. Every year there are new designers that are anointed as the next big thing to add to the list of those that we know and love. And you're in luck, monsters, because we have gone through all the fashion show presentations and leave you with the best of the best. Their design are out there, sure, but for London Fashion Week, they are exactly what you will not expect. First up, new designer Aaron Esch. A recent graduate of the renowned Central St. Martins, Aaron Esch's first runway show played with British archetypes. From the Savile Row tailoring to the sliced sleeves and shrunken lapels, the presentation was right in line with what one expects from a London Fashion Week show. But that was not all. Aaron Esch took it to the streets with club wear and athleisure wear that featured shredded jeans, caps, and slinky dresses paired with requisite face shielding sunglasses. It made for an impressive debut from the designer, combining a feeling of rigor with the frenetic energy of London streets. He called a musing on chaos and control. The next on the list is not so much about Burberry, a well-known brand, but the new creative director for the brand, Daniel Lee. Since taking over last year, insiders have wondered if Lee could keep up with the promise. And for his sophomore show, the upstart delivered on all fronts. Presenting with A-list stars Kano, Skepta, and Burner Boy in the audience, Daniel Lee put his own stamp on the Burberry brand, layered miniskirts, sleek motorcycle jackets, and cherry-printed jacquard uniforms, and their signature paneled Burberry trench coat with high collars. All told, Lee went for broke and broke in bourgeois style. J.W. Anderson was of course the one to look out for per usual. If you truly know fashion, then you know that no London Fashion Week is complete without including the singular and iconic J.W. Anderson as part of those worth mentioning. If the stakes were higher than usual, it makes no difference because Anderson is a brand that always rises to the occasion. True to form, 
The latest collection exuded the fun and surrealism synonymous with the label. No, your eyes are not deceiving you, monsters. Plasticine made a return to the runways with this presentation, and these molded lux gave everyone in the audience something to talk about. Three-dimensional pieces crafted from clay abound on the catwalk, and the collection only toned it down slightly with what came next. Picture it, hooded motorcycle jackets, trash bags transformed into trousers, stiff camel Prussian blue suede shorts, and playful clay creations. No other designer could have experimented at this level and pulled off a collection this so left of center. But that is the beauty of J.W. Anderson design, proving yet again that fashion is supposed to be fun. Not to be outdone, Stefan Cook made quite a debut that will be talked about for some time. Another recent graduate of Central St. Martins, Stefan Cook has made one thing clear. He doesn't give a damn about the conventional. With models barreling down the runway and blurring the lines between male and female, Cook adorned each one in pieces that challenged the traditional silhouettes affixed to gender and did so to wild applause. On the menu were studded ponchos, floor-length kilts, panelled miniskirts, and even military-themed tops and bottoms, many of which featured embellishments that only added to their allure. No question about it, Stefan Kirk is not here for subtlety. Go elsewhere for that. And if anyone drove the point home that London Fashion Week is off-kilter yet still in style, it was K Quark for KWK, undeniably one of the most captivating designers in the current fashion landscape. Quark's unique approach to fashion design stands far apart from established norms. He embraces the latest advances in technology, while preserving the essence of creativity and authenticity. From the color palette to the shapes and materials employed, Quark's collection is busy. Busy? Where to begin? There are the circular shapes symbolizing never-ending cycles, the deluge of color which adds depth and movement, the futuristic print, reminiscent of Hajime Sorayama's artistic style, but also in the grand, presumably 3D printed, luminous pieces that adorn the final ensembles. These hand gestures spring to life, enveloping the body in a symbolic embrace. The show's PS de Résistance is a look that places the model inside a colossal, also 3D printed, Calla Lily flower as if the model were blooming from within. The symbolism, my monsters. The symbolism. Kala Lily is enlightenment, is Buddhism. Equals, we are intrigued and excited for this year's London Fashion Week. This collaboration illuminated our understanding and appreciation of its deeper meaning. Quark's work exemplifies what a designer can achieve by harnessing the vast array of tools available in our modern era. In short, K. Quark is the future of fashion. So there you have it, monsters. London Fashion Week was everything we hoped for. How about you? Which designers and brands did you like? Who do you think are the stars of tomorrow? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for joining us today, monsters. We loved presenting the best of London Fashion Week to you. And get ready for Milan, New York, and Paris soon. Until the next time, stay stylish. And remember, where fashion is, we are. Ciao for now!